In terms of human history, deep human biological history, uh, Africa has a special role as a place of the emergence of modern humans, whether from a, a single population that has crossed the threshold and diversified, or whether from multiple populations that have intermixed to create the fundamental basis of, of modern humanity. Ancient Nubia and ancient Egypt share roots, common cultural roots in Northeast Africa, in the Sahara, and along the Nile Valley. The ancient Egyptians and the ancient Nubians can both be described, especially in the earlier periods, as being descendants of Northeast African indigenous populations. As one writer said, all of these people are Africans, and I define Africans as uh, people whose biological histories have emerged and, and their identities have emerged in Africa and where any mixing that took place took place on African soil. The Egyptians did not come from any place else other than the Nile Valley. Uh, their identities uh, and any other ancestry that they may have had were all forged together in that space. One becomes better known and one's writing becomes translatable, uh, which is purely an accident, the discovery of the Rosetta Stone. Otherwise, we would not be able to read the Egyptian hieroglyphs as well, so they would still be a mystery as well. We have not recovered something similar for, you know, later period Nubia. I don't think in terms of race in general. I don't, and, and when I say this, I, I, I think about it in two different ways. Darwin essentially suggested that in order to say that a species was subdivided into subspecies, which would be the equivalent of races, it, that the populations involved would have to be almost incipient species, okay? So a, a high degree of substructuring. I can tell you that you cannot use the idea of any difference or being able to tell a difference, either at the molecular level or physical level, uh, as indicative of or, or requiring the use of the term race. So I say there are populations, but no races, and, and I'm not the first person to say that. All of these people are connected to each other and dividing them in a way that implies a, a, a level of discreteness that the term race implies is inappropriate. Were there people with darker skin, lighter skin, curlier hair, less curly hair? Yes, there were. There is no evidence that the ancient Egyptians who did medicine, who made observations, and sometimes detailed artwork about the environment around them, animals, plants, uh, there's no evidence that they had a theory of human variation that would be commensurate or similar to notions of race as they were developed in Europe. There's a deep shared ancestry uh, in the Sahara of these societies. The fact that they were sometimes in conflict, uh, we should not impose our reasons, our ways of thinking onto why this conflict may have occurred. The conflicts were political, social, probably over the same issues. Uh, let's not read ideological uh, ideas about the reason of this conflict back into the past. We have to avoid stereotypes. We have to avoid the old ways of thinking, but just put into new data sets or new types of data, which I do believe that we can see in literature sometimes today, you know. Uh, and I think that a lot of times, if you look very carefully at the scientific literature, you'll see that sometimes the old ways of thinking are lurking beneath the surface there. And this is something that needs to be addressed.